In this video, we're going to use the unit load or virtual work method to calculate the unknown moments and reactions forces on a beam element and subsequently go on to calculate the deflections on an indeterminate structure. So in the picture given, we have a beam structure that is a propped cantilever, so therefore it's indeterminate. And what we're going to do is go ahead Calculate the unknown moments, MA, or more precisely, I'm going to call this MAB and MBA. So the moment at B pointing towards A, the moment at A pointing towards B, the reaction at A and B, and finally go on to calculate theta. Once I've calculated the rotation at A, theta, so let's call this theta A, I'm then going to rearrange the equations in term making theta a the unknown. So how theta a would be a function of m a b. And this will then become very useful when we go on to look at other methods of calculation where the displacements and rotations become the unknowns rather than the moments and forces becoming the unknowns. So we have this system which is indeterminate and so we're just going to go through this conceptually rather than go through every single part of the derivation but we need to solve for the unknown forces using the unit load method. So to use this method we need to identify two determinate structures that are equivalent to the indeterminate structure that we have in the picture. So let's draw it relatively the same size. So we can imagine we have, this could be split into a simply supported beam. And I'll do them both as pinned. It doesn't matter whether there's a roller or not because everything, nothing's happening in the horizontal direction. And so we have a moment MAB and this would become our primary structure. And from this primary structure, we can calculate the bending moments with this real load MAB. So that would give us the bending moments M. And we could add to this a redundant structure. Again, simply supported. And now we're going to apply a unit load at this right hand side so we could eventually get to a moment MBA. So this would be our redundant structure or secondary structure. And by using the unit load, we would calculate another bend moment function little m. And using those together, we can set up our compatibility equation. And our compatibility equation at B, where we know from the original structure, we should have no rotation at this right-hand side because of the support condition. So our compatibility equation will state that we want zero rotation at B, which means that the phi to B we could calculate using the unit load method plus a flexibility coefficient at B in terms of rotations multiplied by a multiplier on this what happens if we have a unit moment by the real moment to get us back to zero rotation must be equal to zero so let's just remind ourselves what we know from theta b we can calculate from the integral between naught and l of little m multiplied by capital m all divided by EI, and integrate over DX, the flexibility coefficient, again from the unit load method, we can calculate 
integral between naught and L of little m multiplied by little m over e i d x. And from this, we can calculate our m b a without going through all of the steps in this derivation. This will get us to m b a equals m a m m a b all divided by two. And this is a reasonably fundamental result, so I'm going to put it in a large bracket. So at this point, having found out that the moment on the right-hand side would be equal to half of the moment applied on the left-hand side, we can go back to our original propped cantilever structure, which is originally an indeterminate structure, but with the knowledge we've just found out, we can now draw our propped cantilever structure as a simply supported beam where we have the moment MAB applied on the left hand side and the moment MAB divided by 2 applied on the right hand side. So this is now a statically determinate system we can solve. What we'd like to find out from this system is what this rotation theta A would be in terms of the moment MAB. So again, we can use to calculate our deflection or our rotation, we can use our unit load method. And we use exactly the same geometry. But now we'd like to reapply a unit moment at the point where we want our rotation in the direction that we'd like our rotation. So remembering our unit load ideas, we would get our capital M, our real bending moment function from this first structure. And when we apply the unit load, we will get a little m. So we can then calculate our theta a as the integral between zero and L of m, m divided by E i, all integrated over dx. So using these, this m and this m out now, not the ones we used before. And if we go through write down your moment equations for little m and capital M and work through the mathematics, you'll calculate that theta A equals M A B multiplied by L divided by four divided by four E I. And again, this is an important result that we're going to use in displacement-based calculations where the unknowns are the displacements and rotations. So I'm going to put that in a nice bracket or box. So now that we have this, I'm going to rearrange it in terms of making it MAB equals something to get us to theta A. So rearranging... we can get that m a b would be equal to take the 4 e i up 4 e i divided by l multiplied by theta a and this is a really important result that we will be using in subsequent methods also earlier on in this derivation we found that MBA would be equal to MAB upon 2. So we can also write that MBA is equal to half of this. So 2EI divided by L 
multiplied by theta a. And we're going to use these results in later methods called the slope deflection equation method or in the direct stiffness method. So this is the situation where we had a rotation at one of the beam ends and a moment applied at that beam end. We can also imagine a situation where we'd like to know what would happen if we have a beam that's maybe fully fixed in at one side but is allowed to displace at the other. So the boundary condition is it's able to roll in the y direction but is restrained from rotation and as a result of this boundary condition if we were to apply a force at this right hand side where it's allowed let's call that f but we would get a deformed shape where there's no rotation at either end but there is a deflection so we would expect a deformed shape similar to this and a deflection at this right hand side which is delta. So we want to go through the same process where we can find out how the moment at either end could be expressed as a function of the displacement at the end. So like before what we need to do is calculate the unknown forces in our indeterminate structure. So I'm going to take this structure that we had before, I'm going to remove one of the support conditions, make that redundant and solve for it. So I'm going to change this and get rid of the support on the right hand side so I'm left with just a cantilever. And I have an unknown force. I'm going to call this the force at B pointing towards A. And as a result of this force, I would expect a deflected shape that curls round like this. But as a result of this, I'm going to end up with a rotation at B, the right hand side, that is unwanted. So this is V to B that we don't wish to have. So therefore we, we need to have a redundant structure, so the same geometry, the same boundary conditions, but we're now going to apply a unit load, which we're going to factor up using a compatibility equation to find the real moment that would get rid of this rotation phi to b that shouldn't exist. So we write our compatibility equation. For this indeterminate structure so at the right hand side we want no rotation so the theta b that we calculate from the cantilever with the real load on it needs to be cancelled out by a flexibility coefficient that we can calculate using the unit moment and multiply by a multiplication factor which is actually the real moment MBA. So remind ourselves, and so this would give us the real moment function capital M. This will give us the unit moment function little m. So we can use integral little m capital M over EI dx to calculate V to B. We can get our flexibility coefficient from little m, little m over ei dx. And finally use compatibility to get mba. So working through the calculations, which we're not going to do to keep the video relatively short, we would get that mba is equal to minus fba 
multiply by L upon 2. And finally, reminding ourselves what we'd like to know is this deflection delta at the right hand side or B. So we're going to apply a unit load at this right hand side, but remind ourselves that as a result of calculating the indeterminate structure already, we have a determinate structure that will have the force FBA on it. We would need to apply to this a moment of minus FBA times L upon 2, which we could also say is MBA. And we have a determinate system, and what we'd like to calculate now is... Oh, let's draw that a bit better. This deflection delta B at the right hand side. So we can go through the same process with the unit load. So we apply unit load at this right hand side and get a moment function little m. We can apply these real loads and get a moment function capital M. And then we would write down for delta B is equal to the integral between naught and L of MM over EI DX. And after a lot of manipulation and doing the integrations, we can get that delta B is equal to FBA multiplied by L cubed over 12 EI. And I'm just going to rearrange that very quickly in terms of FBA. So FBA would become 12EI over L cubed multiplied by delta B. And as we've already said, we know that this FBA multiplied by L upon 2 is equal to MBA. So we can say that MBA is equal to FBA multiplied by L upon 2. So that is equal to, we had 12 EI upon L cubed multiplied by delta B and multiplied by L upon 2 so that becomes square that goes that cancels out that becomes 6 and finally we can say that MBA is equal to 6 EI upon L squared multiplied by delta B and this here is how we express delta B in terms of the moment and the term in between the 6EI upon L squared is what we call our stiffness coefficient which we'll use for beam analysis using the slope deflection equations or further on in your studies for the direct stiffness method.